Good morning and thank you for staying with us. Welcome to Off the Press and Plus TV Africa, where we get to look at the headlines, the major headlines in our national dailies, with an in-depth review and analysis of the headlines in the dailies. And joining me this morning on Off the Press is Public Affairs Analyst Bolahon Lojide. Thank you for staying with us, Bolahon. Thanks for having me. And let's come to the dailies this morning. First with us this morning, we have the Punch newspaper, Russia. Afrimex banks to provide $1.46 billion for Ajakuta completion, and that's in page 25 of the Punch newspaper. PDP fumes as Supreme Court <coughs> sacks EADR, declares Uzodima winner. And Presidency Minister differ on finance law implementation. Southwest plans legal action as federal government declares Amotekun illegal. Law will take its natural course against operation, says the AGF. Amotekun is a reality, no going back, says the Ogun government. And laws are not made in AGF's office, says Akero Dolu. Still in the punch this morning, OOU denies deliberating on commissioner, designates alleged dismissal. Three killed, 12 injured in Lagos gun crashes. Buhari inaugurates Lagos Ibadan Railway in May, says Amechi. Suspect behind Buhari's fake marriage video gets bail. And police drop car theft case against Naramali siblings. Man jailed two weeks for making calls in courts. Um, this seems to be major across all the dailies. The Southwest planning legal action against, as federal government declares, Amotekun illegal. We did but on that earlier during yeah. the news. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it's the right thing to do. They should just go to court. Um, the AG had cited the law yes. as a basis for declaring it illegal. So. Don't forget that one of the governors is a son as well. So it's not as if there is no understanding of the law. And each of the states have the office of the attorney general that will advise the governor as well. The best thing to do in those kind of instances is to take it to the authorized body hmm. to interpret the laws of the land. And that body is the judiciary. So let's take it to the judiciary. Let it declare it illegal or otherwise. And the reason is, is simple. This matter is not about to just disappear. It will come up again sometimes in the future. So yeah. let's resolve it once and for all and know what is possible and what is not possible. What is legal, what is not legal. And interestingly, this, this was set um, the, the, right, the right stance to, to other states who are already thinking of setting up and starting up their own um, security outfit. Correct. Yeah. 23 states yes. have internal security arrangements. Um, Similar. Well, maybe, maybe it is even the scope that is the issue here. Maybe because this one looks like a regional affair. Yes. It, it is could, a regional affair. It could, it could yes. be. Maybe that's the problem. But let's get the court to guide us in this matter. I think it's very important. Now, let's, let's, let's take a possibility. Do you think, because this, we're talking about the entire Southwest. Correct. And do you think the federal government felt some kind of way intimidated, frightened, the fact that we have the entire Southwest region coming together to form a security outfit, and that could be a mercenary against the federal government, that could be used against the federal government? Uh, well, I, I won't say used against the federal government. Yes. I think that is going too far. OK. But I think there are genuine concern as to what that kind of a force could matter, but force into it. Okay. You know, you have the politics side of things, and these people could become tools in the hand of the government. Pause and imagine a little bit. Suppose the, 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 the regulation of the police itself is not clarified. Yes. Like there are still a lot of issues to be raised about. Gray areas. Gray areas, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of gray areas, yes. You know, so even the police are structured and as old as it is today. If we don't have a clear way of regulating the police, you can imagine what things like SARS will have become. Oh, yeah. What thing. So we have to be clear exactly about how Operation Amoteco, if eventually it's said to be legal, for example, those clarity have to be provided. As it is today, um, there are genuine concerns yes. about what it could become. All right. That, that's the right thing. We'll go for a quick break, and we'll come back as more headlines on Of The Press. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, still off the press on Plus TV Africa. Now joining us during the break is Dr. Femi Dua Digoke, public affairs analyst also. Thank you for joining us, doctor. Good All right, we'll go straight into the nation immediately. The headlines making the, head, um, the headlines in the nation newspaper this morning. How Nigerian pastor raped six girls in UK, 61-year-old convicted. 
Ngege woos Asu with measure of Ipes Utas. And Quara bans religious activities in schools, government to tackle decay. Outrage as federal government declares Amotekun illegal. States lack power over security, says the AGF. Akedolu laws are not made by the AGF. Tax reforms to fetch 8.15 trillion naira cash. VAT hike will boost states' finances. And Uzo Dima replaces Iodeha in Imo states. Now, just before you joined us, Doctor, we did but a little bit about the concerns of Amotekun and the AGF committee declared illegal. Let's have your reaction to that, please. Well, thank you very much. Um, on the Amotekun being declared illegal by the federal government, uh, I, say, um, I think it's a two-way thing. The governors of the southwestern states that went ahead to launch Amoteco, we need to ask them questions. Did they not do their due diligence? Did they not know what the law says? And then at the same time, the federal government that is not coming out to say it's illegal, what were they looking or what, were, they, were they not informed? Were they not carried along? Mm -hmm. Were they not, didn't they have information about this is going to, is, it this, is this just reactionary to other groups yearning so that's 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 it for me i feel we don't want to make this country better we don't want to make it a process driven state we just want to be reactionary we just want to be act anyhow like a lawless society hmm. tax reforms to fetch about 8.15 trillion dollar cash VAT hike will boost states finances let's let's put on that a little bit um did they say eight trillion? yeah 8.15 trillion dollar cash interesting hmm. We didn't see that on, on the not on 2020 budget. Yes, because the entire budget revenue, budget revenue was 8.55 trillion, and if VAT alone, alone was the hike in VAT, <laughs> let's even put on that a little tax bit. There's, there's, there's a possibility of, um, of, of the possible hike in, in VAT from five percent to seven point five to seven point five percent. Well, that is not what deliver, what would deliver this kind of numbers. But you see, the the finance bill incorporated much more than VAT. It's a whole lot of uh, reform around our taxes, okay. really. Um, it may not happen. I don't think 8.15 trillion will happen in 2020. But if we consistently execute the promises of that bill, of that act, we will get to this junction. Just imagine, for example, the fact that part of what this act wants us to be able to do is to get more people into our tax net. He's saying everybody should register. Whether you're paying taxes or you're not paying taxes, whether you're even old enough to pay taxes, you should have a tax number, tax ID. Now, when you do that, what you're technically doing is bringing more people into that tax loop. How many Nigerians really do have their tax, tax ID at this point in time? Uh, I, I don't have the numbers, mm. you know, but you, you will see what will happen by the end of this year when it, it, it now eventually becomes part of what is required to open an account. Yes. So for you to have an account, whether as an existing account holder, or you're opening a new account, you will be required to register. You know, yeah. have but, a tax but ID. But the concerns, it's, it's not so much about the hike in the VAT from the, the current, um, what is obtainable, 5% to 7.5%. It's the accountability and responsibility of, for, of the VAT that have been collected in past. Um, Nigerians are complaining we're not seeing, we're not seeing what, what it's yeah. being used for. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're still complaining of bad roads, we're still complaining of portable water, healthcare, and all of that stuff. Doctor? Yes, um, I tend to share your argument and yes. I agree with you on that. I said it yesterday here. The challenge is not the tax, uh, the VAT going up. Yeah. And it's not that the people don't want to pay. It's not the unwillingness to pay. But the lack of because you don't, even have a, you, don't even, you don't even have a, a, a saying that it's, it's compulsory for everything you're buying. You, it's taken, it's taken, you don't, have, you don't have control over that. Yeah, because it's the, it's the consumer that pays oh, the VAT. Oh, okay, comment on that. Okay. <laughs> it's the consumers who pay the VAT. Yes. But the challenge now is that for 20 years, I'm, I'm going to stick with the democratic system that we've had for 20 years. The people seem not to even trust the system of governance that we have. So people don't even want to do anything. They don't want to pay. Yeah, but you, have, you have a different There are two thoughts. distinct problems that we're always mixing together. Number one is that the government has very poor revenue levels. Yeah. The issue of accountability is another problem. They are yeah. two separate problems. Yeah. And why it's important to separate them is that today, even if we save, if we don't waste a dime out of the 10 trillion budget, we are still a very poor country as far as revenue is concerned. So that side does not answer 
the other problem. I don't, I don't know if you get what yes, I'm trying to say. Yeah, yes, there yeah. are two distinct problems. Yeah. But one can help the other. If you manage the money very well, people are more, you are more likely to be able to raise more revenue yeah. because people now build trust capital yeah. with you. And, and this is where the issue of you know, the, the diversifying the economy comes to play because where only one source has been relied on by the federal government to, to generate revenue, um, the, the masses seem to be bearing the brunt when it comes to the VAT. Don't you think so, doctor? No. Well, yeah, the, the masses, <laughs> yeah, the masses seems to bear the brunt. Yeah. But the challenge, the the challenge there is, like he said, it's not just that the masses are bearing the brunt. The, in the past, this country has made so much money from that single economy, which is the oil. Oh, the oil but the question is, what have we done with it? We have not put the right infrastructures in place. We are, and up till now, we are not. In 2020, Nigeria is still, we are still talking about roads. We're talking about schools in year 2020. In 2020, Lagos, as it is, I'm just using it as an example. Lagos is supposed to be a metropolitan uh, state. It's only one means of transportation, which is by road. Lagos is supposed to be a 24 hours economy. And like he said, that, those are ways to make more revenues when you run a state like Lagos State 24 hours. Mm. But we cannot because the right things, the right infrastructures are not in place. And that is why the people seem to bear the brunt. All right, I want to quote the, the, the budget planning minister, Zainab Mohammed, what, what, she, what she said. Um, mm. Zainab Mohammed, I beg your pardon. Um, the tax reforms contained in the Finance Act 2020 will enable the federal government to hit its 8.15 trillion non-oil revenue target to fund this year's budget, according to to our statement. Now, President Mahmoud Buhari signed the, the finance bill on Monday. In a statement yesterday, the minister explained that a large sum of money relies from taxation would rather go to the people, the state and local government areas, and they are to get 50% and 35% respectively, while only 15% will go to the federal government. So there, there's, there's, there, there's a hope that the realization of this money will be used to finance this year's budget. It will be. It will How be. realistic is that? Because you had rightly <clears throat> said that it cannot be within the space of 2020. Yeah, you yeah. see, there's, there's a little mix-up in this number. Yes. And the, the amount being attributed to taxes here as revenue is actually it's taxes. Almost it's actually taxes yeah. and oil, if you look at that, the, the budget numbers. Yes. So, yes, the, the difference that makes it up to 10.54 is meant to be borrowed. You know, yeah. So there's a mix-up of yes. numbers okay. there, uh, essentially. But you see... The taxes will help. I, I wanted to make a comment on what you said about the masses. Yes. The way VAT is structured, it is structured not to affect negatively the lowest part of the ladder, the lowest rung of the ladder. That is why food, transport, uh, uh, education, even, even spare part, education, school, school fees, baby, uh, all these things are totally yeah, excluded yeah, from VAT. Right, but yeah. if you say you are poor and you decide to order breakfast from Sheraton, yeah, you, you pay, pay the taxes, that. please. Yeah. That's ostentatious yeah, leaving, yeah, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's quickly look at The Guardian this morning. The headlines in The Guardian newspaper. Crisis in APC, NWC cover choice of scribe, and outrage as Customs spends 1.6 billion naira to employ 3,200 personnel. Many fear dead, houses burned as tanker explodes in Benue. Families of 58 victims in Kaduna lament abductors' demand for 100 million naira ransom. How hope was a demand flood here they are at Supreme Court. Judges order swearing in of APC candidate and Tambawa Ganduje no fate on Monday. South Middle Belt leaders reject federal government's declaration of a motorcoon illegal. All Southwest governors to ignore Attorney General. Regions governors will respond appropriately, says Fire Me. Now interesting instead interesting headlines in, in the Guardian this morning. And let, let's 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 look at security wise. Um, that, that there, was, there, was a, there was an attack in, in Plateau Joss um, last week and Kaduna seems to be coming under again. What does it say 2020 security-wise for the federal government, the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari? Well, I think what it says basically is that the challenge is still there. The security challenge, you know, things, things improved dramatically towards the end of last year. Yes. All of a sudden, at the, from the beginning, in fact, from the 2nd of January, I think that attack in Kogi was 2nd of January. January yeah. And 
from that day, it has been one attack or the other, one kidnap yeah. somewhere yeah. or the other. It shows that the, that insecurity has not been totally dealt with. It's not, it's not been eliminated. We must also note that there seems to be an increased level of uh, military actions against the Northeast uh, insurgents. Also, around that same period, there have been consistent uh, action by the Air Force, bombing and bombing yeah. and bombing. So while we are dealing with those uh, Northeast people, the uh, uh, insurgents, there is also the, the, chances that, the, the chance that banditry might be running inside in some other corners. And the government cannot but keep the eyes on the ball. Yeah. Now, the, the, the South Middle Belt leaders have asked, um, have rejected the federal government's declaration of a motorcoon as illegal. Yeah. Your reaction to that, Doctor? Well, and like I said earlier on, um, I'm not a lawyer. The lawyers will do justice. I think if the federal government is saying it's illegal, I think the Southwestern governors should go to court and go and get clarification from court based on that. I don't know the legal impl impl implications. Yes. But on the public or the moral side of things, like we're, we're talking about um, insecurity in the Joss Plateau now, I've always said security is a local problem. And that's what, from what they've said, that's what Amotekun is supposed mm -hmm. to look after. We need, the federal government, like he said, are busy uh, on the Northeast. But the local front and the LG and the state, what are they doing? So the, because the, the first responsibility of a governor is the security of the citizen of the state. Yes. So I, I, I think we should make security local. All right, moving on swiftly in the Daily Sun, the headlines, federal government declares Operation Amotekun illegal, says it's against constitution. Sage, SMBLF, Taku Malami. A man behind Buhari's <laughs> fake wedding video arraigned in Kano. Mbaka's prophecy comes true. Ihedior sacked. Supreme Court declares APC's Uzo Dima winner of Imo Goba. And PDP, Obi shocked as Buhari, APC, Lawan, others congratulate new governor. Oweri residents keep mum. Nigeria was country on minimum wage, says international NGO reports. And reps direct NERC to halt hike in electricity tariff. Another storm in APC as Deputy Chair asks Oshomale to vacate office. Reps direct neck to hot hike in electricity tariff. Let, let's put on that a little bit. The, the hike, at the, the driver of the... Okay, let's all agree yes. on one thing, and that is the fact that we're not paying the right tariff, generally, in the country. And what will be the right tariff? The right tariff are we getting, are we getting Are we getting the right supply of electricity? No, those, those are two different things. Let, okay. let, me, let me explain <laughs> this. Now, without the right tariff, you will never get the right supply of electricity. Okay. So there is a chicken and egg element right there, mm. you know, because you would never be able to attract the right level of investment into that space. People bringing their money want to see through that investment. Sorry, but mm. does the right tariff, sorry to cut you, the right tariff, does it, does it influence generation? Stand alone, yeah. it doesn't. There are okay. a whole, it's a systemic issue we're okay. dealing with, but yeah. I'm just saying that one of those issues is the tariff. The okay. tariff is not right right now. But think about the metering problem that we also have. Yeah. If you don't meet the people and you're estimating mm -hmm. bills yeah. for them, then how can you increase the tariff? Does it mean you will increase the estimated mm -hmm. that you are giving to them as well? So it seems we need to solve the problem of metering, and then we deal with the issue of tariff. The reality about tariff right now is that I think I th maybe we even need to start letting people know that this tariff is not the tariff that will deliver electricity for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. Public affairs analyst Bolao and Dr. Femi, thank you for being part of Off the Press this You're morning. Welcome. You're welcome. And this is the much we can take on Off the Press this morning. Join us again tomorrow, same time. This is Plus TV Africa. My name is Benny Ark.